Hey friends, so if you've ever checked out my Earth Cry music, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of glitch and buffer style effects. Now, creating these kinds of effects can take a really long time, and sitting there micro-editing everything with your mouse isn't always the most fun thing to do. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple tactics for creating these buffer style effects, as well as a new workflow within Ableton 11 for capturing them and editing them super fast, all right? Let's check it out. So here's the tune I'm working with, and I really like the other sounds that I've made, but the drums are kind of boring and I want more action, all right? So take a listen. So what I've done is I've grouped the drums all into one group, okay? So this is where all my drums are living at this moment. And as you can see, it's very basic, just some samples in there. So what I've done is I've put some effects on this whole entire drum group, okay? So the drums are living in this group, and these are the effects. So of course I have a beat repeat here, and nobody wants to hear a beat repeat by itself. It's just not fun anymore. There's so many more things that we can do nowadays. So I've got a beat repeat, but I'm following it up with a grain delay. Um, and so to just break this down quickly, um, the beat repeat is repeating at a, at a quarter note interval with a 100% chance. And what that means is that it's always going to repeat, so it sounds like this. And so beat repeat gets a lot more interesting if you start turning up the variation. At this point, if the variation was all the way down, we'd only have 16th repeats, right? But if the variation is up, it's going to do different styles of repeats, so now we get... Right? And I have a little bit of pitch decay going on here just to kind of get the sound to be slightly different. So I'm not going to totally break down beat repeat at this moment, but the final thing I want to say is that I have it on insert mode, meaning that it's replacing the audio coming into it. If it was on mix mode, you would hear my original beat as well as beat repeat, like this. So maybe that would make more sense in a different setting, but in this setting, I'm trying to get the, the, the repeats or the buffer, which is essentially what this is, it's a buffer, meaning that it's capturing audio and repeating it, right? So I wanna capture that, not anything else. And then I wanna process those repeats with this grain delay. So grain delay is really fun in that it's also a buffer effect. I mean, all delays, you could really think of all delays as a buffer effect, taking the audio and splicing it up into tiny little bits and then repeating those little bits. And so between these two effects though, we can start to get in my opinion, an interesting enough sound to maybe actually be worthy of capturing, right? So, so this is what it sounds like with this grain delay setting that I have. And if you take a look at the interface on grain delay, you have actually an XY controller and you have all the parameters laid on both the X and the Y axis, right? So something that I could do is I could say, all right, well, the spray will be my Y axis and the X axis might be, I don't know, pitch. Let's take a look. Let's take a listen to what happens when I do this. Right? <laughs> so that's kind of fun. That's, that's enough crazy stuff going on. So maybe up until this point, you have been doing a thing where you say, all right, I'm going to hit A or I'm going to hit this button right here and I'm going to reveal my automation. Then I'm going to sit here and I'm going to meticulously automate every single parameter that I want to change. Now, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that, and in fact, there's no reason not to do that, but in this specific case, that would take an extremely long amount of time, okay? So, instead, what I think is, is really great is just to make a new audio track, okay? And this audio track, we could call it glitches. See if I can spell. Glitches. So, in glitches, this is going to be our destination track for the effects that we make. So in this case, I'll say input from drums. So external in right now, we're going to go down to drums, okay? So drums is now our input, and i got to arm the track. If I turn off automation, okay, we can now right-click and we can see show take lanes, all right? So this is an Ableton 11 feature. And so the final thing I want to do is turn off automation arm because I don't want to record any of these changes that I make to the parameters, okay? Now, what I'm about to do is I'm going to record the output of drums into glitches, and I'm going to edit and change the parameters over here while it records, okay? So let's go ahead and do that.
So now I've got a bunch of material here, all right? And so the next thing I want to do is I want to go back to my drums track and I'm going to turn off these effects and open another effect. So in this case, I'm using the fracture effect and this is by Glitch Machines. This thing is freaking sweet, okay? It's awesome. It really takes the idea of a buffer style effect and really moves it forward as far as I'm concerned. The idea here is that you have a buffer, right? So basically what this is doing is it's taking small snippets of audio and replaying them, right? You have a filter and then you have a delay, right? And then you have these LFOs, three different LFOs and they're all identical. And, and the reason that it improves as far, as far as I'm concerned on the beat repeat idea is that beat repeat is locked to a clock completely, okay? It's totally locked. So any of the divisions you have in time are always going to be exactly locked to your clock. Whereas Fracture, the thing about this is that you can see up there we've got milliseconds, okay? So these are milliseconds um, dividing in time. But the cool thing is that the LFOs can be synced, okay? So what this does is this opens an entirely new expressive opportunity for folks. And you have this cool thing where this drop-down menu will switch the order of these three effects and you can get these different sounds out of it, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start messing around with this effect and I'm gonna record it more takes into my track, okay? So I'll go ahead and, so I wanna start fresh, so I'm gonna load a brand new fracture up, load it up, and then we're gonna start recording into this track. Okay, <laughs> so now you can see that we've got this giant juicy pile of nonsense, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all the effects that are sitting on the actual drum track. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at how amazing using the take lanes is for this kind of workflow, okay? So what I can do now is I can zoom in and say, all right, here's my pile of nonsense. I'm gonna start picking and choosing different parts of this to create the glitches that I want to sit behind the drums, okay? So one of the best things about this is that you can see that it is locked to the grid. Okay, so if I turn on my pencil tool, all right, by hitting B, we can see that I can just go ahead and draw in some of these glitches, all right? So, so starting with my pencil tool, I'll start selecting maybe some of these glitches. And as you can see, as I select them, they're locked to the grid. So let's go ahead and listen to what we have thus far. <laughs> so do you see how fast that is? I've got all kinds of crazy glitches in here. Now, of course, this is not where you stop. This is this is where you have to get in here and really, you know, figure some stuff out. So maybe, so, so what I like to do at this point is I like to loop a shorter section, okay? So I'm just gonna loop this section and let's take a listen. Now you can also inversely select areas without the pencil tool and hit enter. That will also commit different sections of this, right? So now we have. Okay, so now that I've got these kind of laid out, the next thing I wanna talk about is that you're not locked to this. This isn't stuck this way, okay? So one of the first things you might have noticed is that this glitch is extremely loud, right? So I could double click on this and say, all right, chill out. So now we get. and this one right here. And you can also see that this little hit right here is early, okay? So one thing I could do is I could say, all right, well maybe I'll just time stretch it. That's cool. Maybe this glitch, I'll, I'll time stretch this back to the beginning. And maybe this right here is too loud, so I'll just command E, and turn this one down.
<laughs> Rad. Moving on. That last little glitch is boring, so I'm just going to maybe select this one. And something else to know is that this stuff is also not locked in time in terms of the grid itself. So I could actually hold command and drag this forward in time if I wanted to. So now we get... Now, this workflow is just one of many workflows that I teach in explicit detail in my sound design and synthesis course, which I'm launching in one week from today. So if you're from the future watching this video, it's already out. You should go get it. This beast of a course is jam-packed with deep dive tutorials covering every single Ableton instrument and device in thorough detail, as well as some other plugins such as this Fracture plugin. I cover that completely. Each section also features workflows and actionable synthesis and sound design examples for each device in Ableton, making it, as far as I know, the most comprehensive guide for sound design available on the internet. Now, I'm gonna be real with you. You can learn anything you want to learn about music production on YouTube but it's hard to know exactly what to search for. Much of the time, the lessons are scattered and unfocused, if not just plain wrong. Now, I've put together three courses on Ableton production that are chronological and optimized to raise your skills to the next level quickly and efficiently. Between all three of these courses, there's 45 hours of hyper-focused content, which is constantly growing as I add more and more to them. So if you enjoy my teaching style and you take your music seriously and you wanna join a rad community of amazing producers, check the links down in the comments in the description. All right, let's get back to it. So potentially you're looking at this and you're like, well, I don't have Ableton 11, man, Like I, but I really like this workflow. Well, it's just as simple as, I'm just going to do this a different way. So I'm just going to make a new audio track, okay? And you could just keep doing run-throughs. I'll just do short ones, all right? Let's just say we want to do this section right here. You could just keep doing run-throughs with these effects. So I'll start with the first one again, and I could say, all right, on this track, new track that I have, external in from drums, and there we go. All right, so then I can make another audio track and say, you just have to remember, input from drums every time, right? And now we're gonna mess with Fracture. So let's try this. <laughs> and now instead of using the pencil tool, it's just as simple as selecting different areas of time and hitting zero, because what that does is it deactivates that section of time. So you can still work with the grid. And you can also, you know, you can also just drag this over. So maybe we got... That's pretty cool. We'll get this one out of here. Maybe drag this one over. Take this one, put it here. Hit zero on that one. Turn off my fracture, don't forget to do that. Now we have. <laughs> Super fast edits, right? Awesome. Well, if you enjoy this kind of thing, this is what I do. Again, I have these courses, but I'm always going to be making free content. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.